Okay, so uh, I'm in the technology industry for uh, something like uh, 13 years. I started uh, in a different area. I was a school teacher for five years and I was always uh, telling my students that the future is with technology and uh, they should uh, uh, reach out to, to gain some technology education and stuff. And then I told myself you should do that also. So I switched uh, when I was 30. And I worked uh, for a company where I met Duron. He was already VP of technology. Duron is the founder of Futest. So I started very low at that company. I worked uh, my way up. And we worked together for uh, at least eight years. And then uh, I established my own consulting company and worked as a consultant for a few, uh, couple of years. And then Duron, after, after he, in parallel, uh, founded Utest, he, re he also uh, reached out to me and uh, asked me if I would like to take the operation in Israel. So I thought it could be a great opportunity. I loved the idea. I knew uh, Utest before. So I took this opportunity and converted my, my consulting company to, be, to, to work as Utest Israel. And uh, since then, uh, we're a part of the global operation of Utest. And Utest, as you know, is the company that is working with uh, all the big players and all the startups, helping them making better products uh, through uh, um, real world testing with community of testers. And uh, we are growing our business in Israel and see in parallel how Utest is uh, growing uh, globally. It's a nice experience. Okay, it begins uh, with the two people, uh, Roy Solomon and Doron Ravini. And Roy had the vision. Uh, he worked as a, as a test manager and uh, he was rather young back then, 26 years old, but already had this vision of Utest, uh, helping um, companies to make better products uh, while working with the people rather than test their applications and products, uh, software products in the lab. That was uh, uh, the vision of the U-Test. The founding team uh, was, as I said, Ron Rovini. Uh, I know him for many years. Uh, we worked together in, a, in another company and, uh, and Roy Solomon. And uh, they uh, together established Utest in 2007 and worked on the platform for two years until uh, the launch. And during that time, I was aware of this company and uh, the journey they had uh, that these years uh, to, to make the platform ready. And uh, then I joined uh, in Israel in 2009. There are several success stories uh, uh, already. And you know, it's, it's hard to, to pick one. I think. Uh, um, until today, the bigger, biggest one is, uh, is the adoption of uh, our uh, vision and work by Google. It's still the biggest achievement. It happened uh, in 2009, uh, early in 2009, and the uh, relationship evolves all the time. Uh, there are also other achievements. I think that the fact that uh, Verizon as a carrier adopted Utest as a concept is a great achievement uh, for future uh, uh, testing work over uh, devices, which is a new, uh, new thing uh, for, uh, for U-Test. And, uh, and also, I think the recent funding round that U-Test had, uh, uh, D-Round, uh, it was setting a statement that it is, is here for the long run, building a big company that is going to change the way uh, companies releasing software products. So these are the main achievements I can think of. Uh, I think there is a very bright future for U-Test. I think uh, uh, it, it's happening just now that U-Test is becoming industry standard. So uh, I believe in the next two years, uh, U-Test will become... Uh, uh, the, the term U-Test uh, is, is becoming a generic term for in-the-wild testing. And uh, every software company and, uh, and also media company, retail companies, and everyone that is dealing with technology and mobile and web assets will have to make U-Test part of their process in order to uh, perform well as a standard. And I see it coming, and I think uh, it, it is also good for the industry to be more connected to the public and to the people, listen to the voice of the people, and making the entire world working with the companies towards uh, bringing better uh, technology uh, for uh, 
for the benefit of the, of the people. I think startups is, uh, is a fascinating uh, way to, to live your life. <laughs> it's, a, it's a roller coaster, it's, a, it's action all the time, it's exciting. I don't think it is good for everyone, uh, but I can understand the people that are working in startups or uh, initiating startups. It's a, it's a very exciting journey uh, with ups and downs and challenges and uh, uh, moments of uh, great achievements replaced by uh, very big uh, disappointments sometimes. But all in all, uh, it's, it's rewarding, it's fun, and uh, if you're not afraid to make mistakes, if you're not afraid to fail, then I think it's a very interesting way to live your life. I think that the UK has everything to, uh, to succeed and uh, to become a, a major player in the future technology. Uh, you have the people, you have uh, the tradition of, uh, of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, doing things of knowledge, of science. Uh, I think maybe some people forgot it and need to be reminded that this is the UK. So uh, uh, you got everything. Maybe one thing that I would recommend is that the entrepreneurs will work together like we are doing in Israel. Uh, we have all those founders clubs and the uh, entrepreneurs are helping each other and mentoring each other, investing in one another's uh, ventures. Not only uh, angels and VCs are investing, also entrepreneurs that succeeded, they're also invent, uh, investing. Uh, so basically, uh, to work together and not compete each other so much. I don't know if, if entrepreneurs in the UK are competing each other, but it's a big country, and I guess that most of the technology uh, companies are trying their luck first within the UK, so maybe they should look out from the UK and cooperate among each other to, uh, to surmount all the challenges, either bureaucracy or government. <clears throat> I don't think they're, they're, you know, we can complain about our governments uh, every day, all day. But uh, essentially, if we work together, if we learn from each other, then uh, the journey is, uh, is uh, easier and uh, more fun. So that's what I recommend to the local ecosystem. Work together, uh, found your uh, um, you know, entrepreneurs clubs and the mentoring, uh, and create a friendly ecosystem uh, that uh, can bring you to the front uh, faster. And, uh, and it's also, eventually, it will become more appealing to invest and uh, to leverage that to uh, a lively, exciting ecosystem. Israel is uh, often described as a startup nation. And there's a book called Startup Nation. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm experiencing that uh, for, for years now. And I think uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, basically, today in Israel, it is uh, uh, something that uh, uh, it, people are encouraged to become entrepreneurs. Uh, people are, uh, it, it is, it's considered to be uh, something which is respectful. And I don't think it is, I'm not taking it for granted. It's not always like that in other cultures. And uh, we have a decent technology education in Israel, but I don't think it is better than what you might have in the UK or in the USA. We have the decent technology background for people. Um, but we also have uh, uh, something which is special. I think Israel uh, doesn't have any natural, na natural resources and eventually uh, this country needs to create some kind of uh, relative advantage and this relative advantage found its place with technology and with innovation and it is encouraged it is encouraged by uh, the government it is encouraged by the community itself and uh, it, it's like building itself and the customers of the work of innovation in israel uh, are the entire world it's not inside israel so uh, People from Israel all the time reaching out for customers in the USA, in Europe, and other parts of the world. Uh, essentially, this creates a very friendly ecosystem in Israel because companies in Israel typically are not competing each other. They are working towards a common goal to make it overseas. 
And that's why you can see that uh, startups are, are uh, helping each other a lot. In Israel, uh, um, seasoned entrepreneurs are mentoring uh, the, the new generation of young people that uh, are striving for uh, you know, establishing their own startups. And another uh, major contribution is by uh, the big companies that are coming to Israel, like Intel and Microsoft and Google and, um, and others that are like AT&T recently opened an innovation center in, uh, in Israel. So those, uh, and IBM, of course, for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So these companies, of course, uh, contributing uh, by uh, creating uh, corporate uh, places for people to work, uh, supporting the, the education and, uh, and uh, building up the foundation of, uh, of technology, which is relying on the one hand of the big corporates and their innovation centers and development centers in Israel on the, on the one hand, on the other hand, the, the startup ecosystem. The, and by the way, there is um, a communication between uh, these two groups and two groups of benefits from, uh, from each other, the big corporates that are active in Israel and the startups. So all together, it creates like a supportive environment where start startups can succeed. And on the other hand, also a friendly environment uh, to grow and to succeed.